Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Museum Madness. In this episode, we're going to be finishing off the last few, well, a couple of the last few of our biology exhibits. We have two of the most tedious and lengthy exhibits to come in this episode, and let's do our best to get them done in relatively short order. First, the Hall of Animal Habitats. So if you've tackled high school biology before about things like ecosystems and plant life and animal life, you know basically what this exhibit is going to be. Let's talk to Mick real quick to get our 411. Basically all of the animals from these exhibits have been taken downstairs to the storage area and we have to bring them back, but there are some restrictions on how we can do that. We have to have only one animal from each habitat at a time, and certain animals are also incompatible with each other, which means that we can't take them all at once. We can use this lift right here to get down to the storage area where we will find our animals. Now the biggest problem with this exhibit is the fact that these animal silhouettes are a little bit ambiguous. It's kind of hard to tell what's what sometimes. But you have eight trips with the cart before the exhibit kicks you out and you have to start it over again, so you can usually trial and error this fairly well. As long as you get a couple of them where you've taken four animals at once, then you should be fine. So let's start um, over here on the left side. We've got some birds, it looks like, as well as some larger animals. And that's the thing, these animals are sorted by size or relative place on the food chain. So the largest animals in each ecosystem are on the far left, followed by the second largest, and so on. They aren't necessarily, uh, well, let me see. Yeah, they are lined up in what goes in what ecosystem, I believe. Um, no, not quite. They're, they're, a, they're a little bit, a couple of them are, but a couple of them are a little bit scattered. But like you can see here, we have a monkey. This one looks a little bit weird. That's actually a toucan. There's a snake here. There's a butterfly. Basically, we have to get all of the animals that are in each eco ecosystem to that ecosystem. But if two animals prey on each other or if they're enemies in real life, we can't carry them in the cart together. So we have to be a little bit creative as to what we put where. So let's take this guy. That's a, obviously a, a large cat of some sort. And then we can probably take, oh, let's say this guy. And let me see. Um... Maybe this one, and this one. Okay, so we've got our big cat, and we've got some bugs. So let's go ahead and head back up and see what we have to put where. Now there are four, we can pop up in any of the four ecosystems, but let's start with the one on the far left, the desert. And we'll go from there. All right, so. Out of all four of these animals, the one that goes in the desert is... That's right, the tarantula. You click on an animal, and if it goes in that ecosystem, you'll immediately see it arrive in that ecosystem. And you can then click on it to interact with it and allow it to move around a little bit. Let's go ahead and head over here to the next one to the right, which is the savanna, or grasslands as they call it. Now, of all the animals to go in the grasslands, the actual solution to this one is the first thing that we picked, the very large cat, which happens to be a leopard. And again, you can click on it to uh, interact with it. Very, a belching cat, I suppose, but whatever. And since we know that all four of these animals have to be from diff different ecosystems, otherwise it wouldn't let us carry them all, we have to figure out which goes where. So we have a large flying bug of some sort and a butterfly. One of them goes here in these woodlands. Let's go with this guy. Yep. Not exactly sure what that is. It's a bug of some kind, but I'm not sure exactly what. But uh, yeah, this is where it goes. And we can just keep moving over here to the right. To the rainforest, where the butterfly goes. Ta-da! All right, so that's four of them done. Let's go ahead and head back down and uh, pick up our next load. And you've basically seen all there is to the, this exhibit. 
The only thing is, once you get down to a few animals, it's harder to put them all on the card at once because they'll either be from the same ecosystem or they'll be predator and prey. So you kind of have to plan ahead a little bit. Let me see here. We'll go with the snakes. The ants. Can we do the ant as well? Yes. Okay. So that means these three have to be from three different ecosystems. I know the snake is from the rainforest and the ant is from the grasslands. So this one is either from the desert or from the woodlands. So let's try... Um, hmm. We have a woodlands. Let's see. If... Now, so see the woodpecker would eat the ants so we can't put them together hmm. let's try this one the deer okay so the deer we know is probably going to be the woodlands but again we're going to start from the left and go right there we go now why we can't put predator and prey together makes sense if these are actually animals but it's already been established that these are actually robots that are meant to act like animals Put the snake down there and it doesn't it really honestly this whole exhibit and all the restrictions that it places on you don't make sense except from a storytelling perspective and even then it doesn't really work out so we can go ahead and load up our little ant farm there and keep moving this is one of the less logical exhibits I want to say it does doesn't make as much sense as some of the other ones we put the deer in. Hey, Bambi, what's up? We can keep moving to the right. And we'll drop off our snake and we'll head back down. There we go. Emerald tree bow, one of my favorites. I love these as a kid. All right, let's head back down again. All right, so we've got lizard, frog, all of our birds, and a, a monkey and a mouse. So let's go monkey, mouse, since we know those two probably aren't the same ecosystem. And then we'll do tree frog and let's see desert, jungle, woodland. We need a grassland. So, well. So the kangaroo rat and the ostrich won't ride together. That seems rather arbitrary, or does it not? But uh, let's take, let's do this. Let's take, put the ostrich in, and take the owl. Nope. So the owl and the frog won't ride together. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me see here. Desert, desert. We needed, we needed one of the desert animals to this time. Can we carry this guy? Oh, is this a? Grassland? I think it's a desert animal. Oh. Oh well. Well, let's try this. We'll do the lizards and the frog. So we have... This is... Let me see. Woodlands. Woodlands. Rainforest. Desert. So we can't... Can we do this one? Yes, there we go. Okay, and the next time we'll just take the birds. All right. So yeah, this is more of a logic puzzle than anything else, but it, it re does require you to kind of know predator-prey relationships. So, for an educational game, it's a decent mini game. I wouldn't call it good because it is very t long and tedious, since you have to watch the same cutscenes over and over again as you move through. But you know, so we can put what is this? I think it's a kangaroo rat, maybe. No. You can't click on him to interact with him, though. He just kind of huddles down in his burrow and doesn't do much else. Um, okay, yeah, then the lizard is here. Just hanging out over here on the rocks. And the next one over should be the woodlands, which will be the frog. Since there's a nice big pond back over there. Ta-da! All right, and then we've got to go to the rainforest to drop off our monkey. Yeah, the hardest part about this exhibit is knowing what animals go with what silhouettes, and having played this one in advance kind of helps with that. Otherwise, it's a lot of trial and error because you're like, oh, that was supposed to be that? Okay, that makes more sense now. 
but yeah. Hopefully it'll let us carry all four of the birds at the same time, otherwise we're gonna have to take two trips, but oh well. Yep, boom, okay. Now we just have to figure out which birds goes, go where, and it's honestly fairly easy to figure it out. We'll start with the desert, and we'll put uh, our desert animal back to where it's supposed to go. There we go. Drop off our owl friend. So the desert ecosystem is completely full again. Now for the grasslands to drop off our ostrich. Excellent. Yeah, it's kind of weird to look because because none of these animals have enough frames in their animations to look at all convincing or lifelike. So they're very, I mean, you can play it off as just them being robots. And it, it does make more sense that way to think of them as real animals. But it still kind of slows the whole rest of the game down as well to have so many things on screen moving at once. So there we go. Drop off our toucan and that's it. Now we have to go back to the main hall and start off the next exhibit. And what might that exhibit be, you ask? Well, let's go and take a look at the board. The Hall of Ecology. This is the longest and most tedious puzzle in the entirety of this, this game, as far as I can remember. Let me think. Yeah. Well, there's one other one that might be tedious, depending on how lucky you are, but this one is definitely the longest. Alright, so you can see this is an exhibit just like the one that we just left, but there's no there's nothing here. There's no animals, there's no plants, there's no nothing. So what we've got to do, first of all, is to play a matching game with all of the animals that are supposed to be here in this exhibit. Now this is tedious because there's no time limit, and there's no restriction as to how many times you can get something wrong before you actually do it properly. So, yeah, this is going to take, this is probably going to take you a while the first time through. Okay, yeah, there's not much to say here. It's just a matching game. Basically, you have to find all the animals that you're supposed, that you, um, yeah, what am I trying to say? You, you find the animals and you've got to keep, kind of keep in mind what animals you've got because you're going to have to, you're going to become very familiar with all of these animals later on. Believe me. There we go. You're over here. There's a mushroom. Alright, and the rabbit. Okay. So we can close that. And that restores all of the animals to the ecosystem, but... The exhibit's still not completely repaired. We have to restore the animals to the system and then reestablish the connection between the animals using a food web. Then the exhibit will be restored. So we have all of these animals here, including a human, a partridge, a fox, a mouse, a thrush. What's this guy back here? A weasel? We have earthworms, we have rabbits, we have a mole, we have grass, we have beetles, a snail, mushrooms. What do we have to do, Mick? What do we have to do? So the animals and everything have been restored, but the food web data has been scrambled. So for this room itself, we, there's nothing more we can do. We restored the exhibit itself, but we haven't restored the exhibit's programming, which is handled over here. So we have there are two steps to this process. We have to restore the food web, and then we have to restore the actual exhibit itself using the food web information. So let's start up here. And this is the most tedious puzzle in the game. It might not look like a puzzle yet, but this, that's because this is the diagram. This is supposed to be what we look at to put the puzzle together. Let me show you. There's a reason that this is the most tedious puzzle in the game. 
because unlike almost every other puzzle in this game where you can just pick up pieces and move them where you want them, this one is one of those sliding block puzzles that you get from like, you know, a dollar store or in your goodie bag from a party. So we have to, a red outline that'll tell us where things go, but that doesn't, you know, that only helps us so much when you have to, you know, shuffle all of the pieces at once to be able to get from place to place. You can also kind of tell by the color gradients where pieces go. The darker pieces are going to go farther towards the left, and the lighter pieces are going to go on the right. Of course, this is going to be a very tedious puzzle, and I'm probably just going to wind up speeding through it at some point. But just so you, you know, just so you get the idea, you want to have the darker colors here on the left, the lighter colors here on the right, and line up all of the pictures so that we'll be able to put them back together and reassemble the food web. go. Now, we're not done yet. What we have to do now is link the food web back together by clicking on an animal and then on its immediate prey. Yeah, that's right. Because you'd think it would be animal to predator, but no, it's animal to prey. So you actually have to click downward. So let's say we're clicking on the human. The partridge we can definitely eat. And let me see. So not the weasel, but we can do the partridge. Let's try the rabbit. Yep. And grass? Uh-huh. Snails? Yes. Some weird people eat snails. It does happen. So now we've completed all the connections from a human to all of the animals that it, on the web that it will prey on. Now we have to do the partridge. For the partridge, it's snails, grass, and worms. Now for the thrush, I believe it's bugs and grass, yes, and what else? No, not the mouse. These two over here, thankfully, you don't have to web those up because basically these are the decomposers. These will eat anything, but anything will also eat them. So, you know, let me see here. There we go, the snail. All right, so that's these three done. Let's try the snail. Grass, yep, that's it. So some animals are fairly simple, it's just one connection, while others, like the human, have a whole bunch that, that they can be connected to, because there are a whole bunch of animals that they prey on. No, uh, rabbits and birds. There we go. The fox is one of the apex predators. You can eat, pr it, it'll eat pr pretty much anything. The mole eats worms, uh, the mouse eats grass, the weasel will eat, nope, it won't eat moles, but it will eat mi mices, mices. Let me see, the worm eats grass, well technically they eat the dirt, but whatever. The rabbit eats grass, and that's it, we have, connect have all the connections done. Now it says we have to use the computer to restore balance to the ecosystem. 
This is the most pointless part of the exhibit. Let me show you. So this is what we have to we have to balance. Each of these slots represents how many of a certain animal is in an ecosystem. So like, for instance, this says no grass, no fungus, uh, lots of moles, weasels, snails. What we have to do is figure out where these bars are supposed to go and then hit play to advance the graph to a certain point to be able to figure out what balance of animals are required to keep an ecosystem stable. Because obviously, if you have too many humans and not enough of anything else, eventually we'll just exploit all of the natural resources and completely destroy the ecosystem. So let's lower the human population to one, raise the fox population to one. Uh, let me see, play with the bird populations a little bit. Leave it about there. Uh, lower the weasel population. Uh, raise the caterpillar and rabbit population to about there. Give us a few more worms. Mice could stay where they are. We'll increase the grass and the fungus to full and leave the bugs right about there. And hit play. Okay, so the ones that aren't flashing basically mean those ones are not correct. The ones. No, the ones that aren't flashing are correct. That means that we hit those levels to where they should be, they're locked in, so we don't have to adjust them anymore. The ones that are flashing are incorrect, and we need to adjust them. So let's raise the fox level by one. Um, yeah, about there. Uh, lower the mole population by one. Lower the weasel population by one. Or no, we'll, we'll raise it. We'll raise the mole population as well. Why not? We'll lower the rabbit population, uh, raise the worm population, uh, lower the fungal population, and lower the beetle population. Or no, let's raise it. Put it up here. Okay. Play that. Alright, so the only ones we have wrong still are the mouse, the rabbit, and the mole. So let's lower the mouse population, uh, raise the rabbit population one notch, and lower the mole population. Oh, so we just have the rabbit population we need to do. Let's put it there. No, not quite. Let's see, do we? It says that there's a graph here. Let's see what's, uh... Okay, so yeah, this will tell, tell you how the population of each animal fares over a certain amount of time. So, you can see that most of them kind of go up and then down and then stabilize. That's because this exhibit is supposed to take place over about four years in a normal ecosystem. So let's boost the rabbit population to max and see what happens. Nope. Okay, let's try it here. There we go. That balances it. So that means that the population stayed at about the same through the all four simulated years of the exhibit. We destroyed the vi we got rid of the virus and uh, restored the ecosystem, and we completed the most tedious puzzles in the entire game. All right, and next time on Museum Madness, we'll be heading back into the biology exhibits for our last one, and then from there, we're going on to history. See you guys then, folks.